Hey everyone, um, this is my uh, first video in the, about a week or so because I've been uh, redecorating the lab. Um, I'm making progress. Um, so I thought I'd do a quick video on um, on this uh, Sabi 7 um, because actually I think it's going to be a short video on this one anyway because uh, there's not much to this. But what this is is a, an emergency distress, distress beacon um, used for search and rescue. Um, so this you would uh, activate if you're um, uh, in distress and uh, you need rescuing. Um, it's um, it's essentially just a, a radio um, a radio transmitter. Um, this one here that I've I've got there's there's many of this um, type. Um, they're all fairly similar, but this one is um, a UK manufactured one. Um, it would normally have a battery sat on the bottom, so the battery would fit on here and of course you'd have an antenna um, on there as well. So as I said this is essentially just a, a, a basic transmitter. Um, transmits on 121.5 uh, and 243 MHz which are both um, international dist distress frequencies. It plays just a simple warble tone um, and um, then in, in the past there used to be satellites that monitored this and then uh, would uh, calculate an approximate position and send that uh, to uh, local authorities to, to act on. Um, so the, uh, it, this isn't actually monitored by satellites any, anymore, uh, but I believe it still might be monitored by ground, um, ground stations, I'm not sure. So this has actually been um, superseded now by digital versions which um, have an ID code and um, GPS transmitted with the, with the distress signal. The code is tied to a person so it's it's a whole lot more traceable and um, and easier to find when when you're in an emergency situation. So taking a proper look at this, we've got um, it's a, a cast aluminium box, um, a window door here, lift to test. There's no there's no apparent um, switches or anything there, though there is two. Um, Two bits here, which I suspect are magnets, and it's um, there's possibly a, re a read relay or something inside um, to uh, detect when that that door is open. Um, you got um, an on-off switch here, which just turns around all the way. And I suspect, given that there's a a slot here, that this would um, there'd be something in this that you can just pull, and it would spin the, the switch around to on and activate the unit. Um, so on the bottom these will be the, uh, the battery connections. As I said, the, you would uh, normally have a battery which fits on the bottom. Um, these, um, these are probably where the battery secures to. So on the back we've got uh, Signature Industries Limited, London, as I said this is um, made in the UK. Um, Got a serial number which is um, obviously individually individually written, and the frequency there. Okay, so we've got the back uh, back panel there. It's a uh, rubbery gasket. So another piece of die cast. We got a ball bearing there on a spring. Yeah, those are those are magnets. So again, I suspect there's probably well, obviously there's there's no connection through. Yeah, there's no um, there's no connection through to the side. So I would suspect there's a reed relay in here. 
So in, uh, in here you can see a small spring there that uh, pushed against another ball bearing which provided the, um, the click effect on the switch as you turn it around. So it looks like this has been glued in. Okay, so this is the board here. Um, on, the, on the left here, we've got uh, the serial number again written in hand. Um, it's um, there's quite a bit of stuff on here actually. Uh, it's quite dense. Um, it's almost all uh, surface mount. So that's the connection to the antenna. We've got uh, an LED. These will be um, read relays. So, so in the box. One, this one was down in here to monitor the test test flap, and uh, the one at the top was to uh, to monitor the uh, the on and off switch. Which is this one here. So date code wise, we got nine five fourteen. 9414. So this is what sort of dates from the mid 90s. Okay, quickly going back to the box, uh, we've got uh, the um, antenna connection. Um, not really much else in here. There's a small little light pipe which had been siliconed into place there. Okay, so I've got this connected up to my power supply so you can hear exactly what it transmits. Um, now, uh, looking around the, on the internet, there's uh, similar devices like this from the same manufacturer run on 12 volt batteries. So my power supply set up um, on 12 volt. So we turn this on. Um, now one thing that surprised me is it does actually draw a little bit of current even when it's not doing anything. So uh, um, eventually you'd, um, you'd have to change the battery. So I guess these probably had a a certain shelf life. Why it um, it draws power when it's not doing anything, I don't know. Now the um, I've actually got uh, my old radio scanner here, but it's set to 121.5. Now I've actually I've already tested this, and the range of this with no antenna on here is um, absolutely appalling. Um, it doesn't even get across the the side of our house, um, so the the range is within. Yeah, you know, 10 meters. So um, I don't think I'm going to be causing any issue with um, with activating this. Um, you can barely hear it on on here. Okay, so I'm just going to test this now by um, pulling the um, the test button. Uh, I'm just going to put the microphone onto the uh, onto my scanner so you can hear. So there you go, uh, just a simple sweeping tone, um, that's all it does. So that's with it off, and then if I activate the test button. Okay, I hope you found that interesting. Um, if you've got any questions or comments, uh, they go in the comments section. Uh, I'll always try and respond. Um, if you like this, hit the like button, um, and if you want to see more, I suggest you click the subscribe button as well, uh, because there's definitely going to be more stuff like this on the way. Um, okay, um, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next video.